don't know the power of sci-fi radio. This station is now the ultimate power in the universe. We would be honored if you would join us. It is another Thursday night, which means another episode of Docking Bay 94, the 35th for the year. Can you believe it? Uh, I'm Sean Obi, Sean Crosby. Jeff sold on a home. I'm Colleen Kaylee Crosby. And uh, welcome, eh? Glad uh, all y'all are here. Um, it's been a week, huh? The yeah. weather's been nuts. And that, a little bit. That definitely had an effect on us. <laughs> Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. Um, yeah, kind of, kind of crazy, but nice. Like, I, you know, first off, um, there are certain areas of Southern California that are out of uh, drought tolerances, which is nice. And yeah, that like doesn't mean we yeah. shouldn't be conserving water well, and stuff. And it doesn't mean all of California is out of right. drought. Right. But, I mean, we got a lot of rain and snow and things like that, which was pretty great. So, yeah, I'm really, uh, really super pleased. Um, if you are listening to us, you're doing so on sci-fi.radio, sci-fi for your Wi-Fi. If you're watching us, you could be doing it on Facebook or YouTube or Twitch. Uh, all of those under the DB94 uh, header. And, uh, hey, we are, uh, are glad to see all y'all here. Who do we got checking in on the chat? We've got Linda Bowden, Kelly mm -hmm. Kane Bryson, and Lori Procopio mm -hmm. over on Facebook. Yep. And uh, Laura I and Talon on the other one. I think it was Don. I always forget. Talon Thorne? It's yeah. not Don. It's Don, yeah. Don and Laura. Not Don. Hello. And not I don't Dawn. know who we have on YouTube because I don't <laughs> have that open. Sorry. Uh, we don't have anybody on YouTube yet. Oh. Okay. And Don Trim says hi. Oh, hey, cool. Don hey, Don. Hey, Don Trim. Woo! Ah. Um, so, before we get into Sean and Kit's uh, big event that they went to, let's talk about all the other stuff first. Totally. Um, Jeff, do you want to start it off? Because you always seem to have something every day. <laughs> yeah, let me... Uh, I I'll can't even remember last weekend. Oh, we were oh, supposed boy. to go to Dickens Fair on Saturday, all yeah. three of us. And was so bummed. it was on, canceled man. because yeah. there was a blizzard warning in... Yeah. Um, where was it? Riverside. Be? Riverside. Yeah, and I think they got snow on that Saturday. Yeah. Not about the Sunday. Yeah, they Saturday. did. It was crazy. Yeah. Well, damn. Um, and it's the first <laughs> time that Riverside Dickens Fair has ever had to cancel. Um, but that... if you could just imagine... It was high winds and freezing rain, and yeah. it would have just been miserable. So yeah. I'm grateful we didn't do it. Uh, well, and, and Jeff and I would have been just a black sooty mess as uh, as uh, chimney sweeps. And I would have smelled yeah. like a wet sheet. We, 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 we would have been warm ones, though, Sean. We would have. That's, that's <laughs> been true. wet, but warm. Well, and I, I have to say that I did wear... Uh, I did wear my um, drover's coat, which is what I usually oh. wear for for chimney sweep. I wore the nice yeah. one. I have a ratty one, and it's a nice one. Yeah. And um, I wore it most of the week as rain gear, Ooh. and it kept me pretty warm, like almost nice. warm enough. I should have nice. worn like an undershirt or something, and yeah. gloves. I needed gloves thermals. this weekend, something fierce. Get some thermals, but you know, not, you know, not anymore. Uh, hey, cat. Caskel, I could never pronounce that one. Uh, thank you for subscribing. Wow, oh my gosh, thank you so much. Not just subscribing, subscribing for 14 months. Yeah. Holy cow. That's amazing. <laughs> Woohoo! Awesome, thank you. Not all Celebrate heroes Caskel. wear capes. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's really cool. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, my gosh, we've... Uh... Uh, we, yeah, so, we're... Go ahead. So, Jeff... Was going to yeah. tell us about oh, um, yeah. his adventures. Yeah. Um, like, uh, 
we, we did stuff for uh for rose's birthday on saturday um earlier in the week uh Ro rose and i went to um was it that week went to the um uh it might have been last week i'm thinking of but th this saturday we we did the rose's birthday birthday lunch thing it was at a um teppanyaki i guess oh um, i love teppanyaki and uh it was uh over in Anaheim. I thought you said Cafe Miyagi. Yeah, you know, Cafe, Cafe Miyagi and uh, uh, other Danya, people from the Korean Kid. San brings they came scone. To wipe our table down, you know. Right. Wax off on, off. wax off. Right. Um, yeah, well, um, it was it was fine. It, I mean, I every, the food was good. And um, the trouble that I had was that um, everyone else did good. And, like, later on that day... Something in the food didn't agree. Oh uh, no! Everyone else was fine, but me, on the other hand, no, it didn't, didn't. It was probably the uh, egg drop, the egg drop soup or whatever that I think is what the problem was because it it tasted way more eggy than it should have. I have found so, that if somebody, if if we're out and we're doing something and somebody is going to get hit by some sort of weird food thing, it will be you, usually. Yeah, yeah. I'm the lucky recipient on that one. You like attract so, it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but um, other than that, it was fun. I mean, it was good. Food was good. They they had like everything. It was it, it was a buffet, right? Cup of jockey. So you would go and grab whatever. And they so they also had the um, the um. Well, if you go to like a Mongolian barbecue, it's like a frying pedestal. But this is just a like a ta tabletop, so you can bring whatever there to have right. fry it. I I didn't do that, but you know, okay. like a lot of the stuff. That's fun. Neat. Uh, it was good stuff. Yeah. And uh yeah, and then I don't know. Um, you went you went hunting for snow? It says quest yeah. for snow in our document. Yeah, that was on Sunday. Um and I've got pictures on my phone and, and I posted on my, on Facebook already, but um I went I because I knew that on Saturday at least or Sunday that there would be there was snow to see and um at the time we couldn't really see Big Bear there was still clouds covering it, so you couldn't really see it. But like um, Saddleback Mountain and the hills around it, you could see. Mm -hmm. And um, I got as close as I could get while being still being an orange. So <laughs> my phone. But um, there is a um, there's a river uh, that goes uh, from. I, I don't know if it's not technically a river or if it's more like a drainage thing, but it's a river. Uh, looks more riverish, but uh, it goes between Hart Park and Grijalva Park. And I went down to that because I saw lots of, you know, nifty, you know, trees and stuff growing growing down there and, and the water uh -huh. and such. So I took pictures of there, too. Cool. Yeah. We actually yeah. got some great pictures. We so went kind of for a, a um, we were going to go for our walk on Sunday and we decided that we needed to go somewhere like good. Different. Mm. Different, yeah, not just walk around our neighborhood like we've been doing for the past three years. And, and we wanted to see the snow less than play in it. Yeah. We, we just kind of wanted to get a glimpse of snowy Colorado-style mountains. So okay. we went to Kenneth Hahn Park, which is pretty close to us. It's yeah, like it's 15 it, minutes. It's like three miles away uh, okay. as, as the crow flies. And it's um, it's weird because so half of the area is taken up with oil rigs and derricks yeah, and yeah. things. I remember that. And and so that's like very industrial. And then there's this nice grassy area around the thing. And uh, if, if you were listening to the show a while back when they were starting to kind of lighten up COVID stuff a little bit, um, yeah. Colleen and I went to a drive-in that was there uh, and we saw... It was like a pop-up drive-in theater. Yeah, they, they, they put up a screen. Up and, uh, we ran into Randy Zamaya on the way out. Oh, they cool. had seen whatever the first movie was. We went to see one of the Star Wars movies. Uh, <laughs> ep episode one or three or something. I don't even remember which one. Um, but uh, so it was weird. Because yeah, we're, yeah. we're walking around the, the bowl area where we... Uh, we had parked for that thing and it's like this weird yeah. familiar earth but we couldn't nice. see anything else around the park when we were <laughs> there and so this was was kind of nice hmm. um we did two trails one was called the bowl trail 
which like went around the area that we had done this drive-in thing in. And what gotcha. was what was the other one called? Like Vista uh, Point the or something. City View. City View. That was yeah. it. Yeah. Oh. Uh, which gave you uh, a view of downtown Los Angeles uh, to like Santa Monica. And in the middle there are are things like Century City and like other small it was gorgeous. Culver Cities cool. there. And yeah, it was yeah. super. The only bummer mm. part was that we couldn't really see the snow. Yeah. Well, we could bummer. kind of see it, but mm. it didn't come out in our pictures well mm. because it was. It was overcast. Yeah, we mm. went like around yeah. three or four in the afternoon. And so gotcha. it was all dark. Yeah, here, hang on a second. Mm. I'll uh, I'll try and dig up. Yeah, I posted the ones that I took in, the, in our quick. in our DB chat. Oh, for the snow. So for right. the 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 hikey snow yeah. search. Well, I'll tell you what. Let me go find yours first. Um, Did any of our listeners go out and and uh, anyone who's in California mm -hmm. or anywhere else where yeah, there totally. was snow this weekend? Did anybody else? try to get a look at it or play in it or anything like that <laughs> um, um and rose took a video did, of it say uh, so in when the it, chat oh alan when is it in fell the chat. This, uh was it yesterday when it fell yesterday on orange but actually snowing rose went out back and it, it did a short video of the snow falling so i got i saw a video of snow falling on disneyland well, i thought we'd talk about that a little later on Sorry. That's okay. Because mm. I was like, oh, I should mention. No, we'll talk about it later. Oh, sorry about um, that. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so here's pictures from uh, from Jeff's hike. Um, Kelly said uh, mm. she went out and looked at it. Mm. The snow. Ugh, really? <laughs> Come on. Is this the park you went to, Jeff? There we go. Yeah. Um, oh, you had a pretty nice it's like, day. It's like... Um, the park on Sunday, it, it's like it, there's a this is the little river channel thing that's in between Hart Park and Grahalla. Hmm. I tried Wait. to get the areas where you could actually see the park portion and not houses and stuff. And like, even after all the part, all the rain, it's still pretty still pretty dry. Gosh darn. Yeah, it, it just soaks it up. Yeah. Uh, it looks very similar to our experience. Uh, oh, at okay. the park. Although I think we have more grass, a lot more. Greenery. Oh yeah, I mean this this isn't really. The park, <laughs> Alan like said I he said. watched like the snow little... from the warm safety of his window. <laughs> Probably wise. Yeah. Uh, I don't know why this thing keeps going away. I don't know. It's yeah, strange, and it's same. very small. And this is just and the the snow I got pictures of literally was this was this was saddleback area hills and stuff. Right. This wasn't really. This is not big bear. Which is, you know, a big blanket. Let's see here. I'm uh, I'm gonna go find mine, which I think I very cleverly oh. put in uh, a just one directory. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Let's see. Here we go. Hi, Kate. Yeah. All right. Let me get mine over here. Actually, I think we did that before, didn't we? Okay. I only took one good picture, so we don't need to look at mine. Okay, yeah, this is all and mine didn't phone. have any That's snow in it. <laughs> um, we had just an insanely beautiful, beautiful day, oh, and good. and I will fully give uh, much credit to these pictures uh, to my phone. Yeah, because uh, they're just freaking amazing, <laughs> and and so parking was a little weird we ended up parking like down the hill where we had to like look and figure out okay which way do we turn our wheels so we don't like roll down the hill when if the brake goes out on the car oh, <laughs> we got credit for going up um on our phones for going up eight flights of stairs on this hike right which is was we did zero cool. stairs but there were lots of hills um okay so this is this is part of lax this is um the telemetry for air traffic control for all the planes oh, coming okay. into Los Angeles and landing. So being one of the higher points in the area, they put a couple of these uh, antenna arrays up there. There's also some radio antenna. There's police and fire communication up there. There's all sorts of things up there, which are kind of cool. Um, okay. But we we had like 
just beautiful views of, oh, yeah, there of you go. the city. But you see how overcast it is? And oh, everything's yeah. got a blue tinge. So there are very beautiful snowy mountains back there. Oh, yeah. We just couldn't see them because the sun wasn't shining on them. Oh, yeah. And geez. I have a whole bunch of friends who got like considerably better pictures. Like yeah. here's Griffith Observatory. I'm way zoomed in. <laughs> and you can see the snowy mountains up at yeah. the top. But they're all very dark and faded and faint. Uh, and they almost match the sky. On the drive home yesterday, um, I was dealing with people that thought, maybe I should look at the mountains instead of drive. So that that was not fun. But <laughs> This is a panorama, if it will ever resolve. No? Oh, there oh, we go. It's doing something. So, so this was like, just, you can, you can see like sort of uh, downtown over in the corner. Yep. And then you go all the way to the ocean where uh yeah you know out past santa monica and stuff that's kind of really and, neat and graffiti and you know. yeah well there's always graffiti and then <laughs> and then you know you look out you're trying to look how beautiful the ocean is and then you have all these oil rigs in the way <laughs> the, the derrick. it's like a giant ant farm going on down yeah. there with the oil totally. derricks pumping pumping oil uh it actually looks like it would be really fun to have like an off-road vehicle uh, uh, cruising yeah. around on those. <laughs> um, here's uh, here's called uh, Century City, which huh. has um, the Nakatomi Plaza building on the left hand side. It's in the foreground, yes, uh, which is little, really you know. cool. Um, and then downtown had this sort of like you know rays of God shining down on it <laughs> with the with the sunshine. But again, there are the mountains in the background, really faint. Yeah, so it was yeah. it was weird. Um. There's a lot of new buildings going up, and some of them are, like, pretty nice. Like, this is a pretty normal kind of building. This yeah. one just made us laugh because it honestly looks like it's wrapped in duct tape. It's like it broke in an earthquake, and they fixed it <laughs> with duct tape. It is the weirdest, weirdest thing, and yeah. uh, I, don't, uh, ah. I don't even know why it's there. But uh, anyway, so, you know, we saw, we saw the mountains. Very, but they match the sky. They're exactly the color of the sky. Um, cool. And uh, I'll just flip through these real. There's Nakatomi Plaza. Um, and you know <laughs> the ocean was getting all the sun, which is pretty amazing. And uh, there's us, just kind of hanging, taking it easy, Yay. remembering to bring our sunglasses, which Yay. we kind of <laughs> got uh, got yelled about. There was a lot of cactus, uh, which okay. was nice as long as you didn't touch it. Uh, oh, yeah. Lots yeah. of mustard flowers and things. And then there would be some weird antenna array that's like, don't go here, you'll die. Lots of, like, warnings and things, which were uh, were, were crazy and, and weird. But uh, this, was the, uh, this was the route that we took, and it was a few miles. It was pretty nice. And we could have kept going and done like a full loop and stuff. But, you know, lazy. Yeah, uh, you know. We'd had enough, I think. But it was a nice day. It was really nice to, to get out. and Yeah, to, it was, we have to do that more often. Yeah, and to be in a different uh, kind of park than, like, yeah. usually we walk around our house here. Or we almost went uh, all the way south to... Um, uh, Rancho Palos Verdes and oh, okay. where we were walking during COVID. We had started walking over there because it was away from most people. Oh and, yeah, good and, idea. Yeah, and so we'd go way south, we'd go <laughs> up into the hills and we'd walk on access roads which gotcha. gave you a beautiful view like of, of everything from the south peninsula there. It's kind of over where Marine Land used to be, if you remember Marine Land. Yeah, yeah. A and you could see you know, all the way to the mountain range to the north. It's just gorgeous uh, place to walk to. Awesome. But uh, this was good. It was a nice change. And yeah, we will. We'll have to do it again. <laughs> Kelly says she likes your moody pictures. <laughs> My moody picture? Yeah, your, your pictures picture. have moody colors. Oh, they are, yeah. Mm. Um, Mute, muted. I'm just, uh, I, I'm really impressed. I, cause, so we're going on vacation and we're going to Japan and they just came out with a new Samsung and okay. I like the Samsung I have, uh, but I also use the camera as an extra set of eyes. 
And so, like today, Colleen was pointing something out in the car, and I couldn't see that far. <laughs> so I used the zoom on the phone to check it out gotcha. and take a picture and things like that. Um, and so there's there's part of me that's like, do I upgrade and get the better zoom on the next camera? Or do I just stick with what I have? But after, you know, so many pictures I've taken this week that just turned out great, uh, yeah. you know, I'm cool sticking with the camera I've got. I don't need to pay him another 400 bucks for a new camera. <laughs> It's only four hundred bucks if you know where to go. Otherwise, oh, it's twelve hundred dollars, yeah. which is like, yeah, let's let's not do that. Uh, yeah, right. I need a serious upgrade with mine because I'm still on like the Pixel Three, and it's like up to I think it's up to seven or something now. Yeah. So. Well, that's what I did with this phone. I went from the ten to the twenty-two. Wow. Which is a pretty sizable leap. So. Wow. I took the 10 um, to the 110 to the 101 <laughs> to the 5. To so the 134 to the, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's not um, a real California trip if you don't I know, do geez. five freeways. Yeah. I sp- Although you didn't, I sp- you didn't do that in the right accent, Colleen. Yeah, I know. Oh my God. Sorry. So I put the um, the little video that Rose took. It is in our little DB chat, too, if you want to look at that or not. Uh, but, uh, yeah, me... it's short. Find it. Short little Snapchat thing that she put in do, 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 do. and Discord, and it's funny because you can see, you know, oh my god, it's snowing. <laughs> oh, let's see here. The biggest oh, yeah. problem is finding these things. Uh, Facebook's running really slowly tonight, too. Apparently, which I find to be extremely tedious. Yeah. Uh, and of course, Oof. oh, it's only like six seconds. Yeah, it's incredibly short. Uh, come on. That is it's like it's like a Snapchat video that she made. So it's uh, exhausting trying to get it. Hey, Eric and Liz, Liz, she's listening. Gone. Howdy, howdy. All right, here we go. Um. Where to get one of the ones? Here's the video. God! Dude, I'm not even kidding you right now. This isn't hail, this is snow. Oh my god! <laughs> That's cool. That's pretty funny. <laughs> there you go. Alright, so let's uh let's move on and talk about what Sean and Kit did this week. Uh, Sean and Kit were very fortunate uh, enough to be invited to the Mandalorian Season 3 premiere. Uh, Jeff got an invite, very kindly stepped aside for uh, some other folks uh, who hadn't been. Um, I uh, figured I would go and I would wrangle. And so uh, that's what I did. I helped people get dressed and uh, was the responsible guy along with with Kit, who kept me company, waiting outside for stragglers to show up and things like that. Um, It was fun. It was pretty good. The the launch of it was tough. Um, And there were technically two ways to participate in this this, um, premiere. Uh, So one way was if you were in costume, you got to be on the red carpet to greet all the actors coming by. So all of our friends who were in costume uh, got lots of autographs and pictures with all the celebrities and all of that kind of stuff. Uh, If you were me or Kit or they're in like street clothes, you got to go through kind of like a little experience on the way in, but you didn't see any of the celebrities at all. Uh, So uh, they cleared out the Giadeli ice cream thing on the uh, left of the theater uh, to the east side and you went in and they gave you ice cream and little waffles and stuff and here let me um let me dig up kit's pictures yeah um, she is on she said she's in waiting in the zoom went room too oh is she oh yeah. there she is yeah. okay Hooray! all right i got uh i got her there oh she should be. Uh, should looks be like everyone in. had fun. And... Do you um? Do you want to switch her out for me or something, Sean? Well, I'm uh, I'm just looking to see how 
we can do it. I want to, I need to hide myself so I don't show up. Because, uh. <laughs> I mean, I didn't go to the event, so. Yeah. You're so not. Maybe just doing the. Well, video for I, I have a thing for. There we go. Okay. Hide, hide self view. I'm just waiting for, for Kit to pop in. I don't hear her yet, and I don't see her yet, so. Can you uh, hear me now? Uh, I can. <laughs> yeah. I can hear you now. We can't see you, though. Um, Kit, are you planning to turn your video on or no? I am not. Oh, you're not. Oh, so it I'm doesn't even matter. <laughs> okay, so if, <laughs> if that is the case, I'll take a phone call. then... Uh, Ooh, I was I'm on the for a second. Right now, so no video. All right, well, then let me just do Jeff. Ooh. And we will just uh, wow. hear your your thing. So I'm gonna um, I'm gonna run your pictures over here. Um, let's do that. So so yeah. So it was an interesting uh, interesting kind of of arrangement. The one of the things that kind of messed us up a little bit is that we got there early to help all the costume characters go. And then the people who were there in street clothes kind of got cut loose a little bit. And and this uh, isn't like a Rebel Legion problem. It's It was a little bit of a Disney problem, I think, where what they really needed to tell us was to... Um, that you had reserved seats? Yeah, that we, that we had assigned seats. Because we didn't... We wanted to make sure that we had been there for a couple hours already and we didn't get forgotten and had to go to the end of the line and didn't make it in because they ran out of seats or gave our seats to someone else or whatever. So if they had told us that, I think we would have relaxed. And once they did, and and the guy who was organizing stuff realized that, he's like, I probably should have led with, we have reserved your seats. And <laughs> and once Kit and I knew that, we're like, oh, fine, we can go in any time. It doesn't matter. Nice, nice. Because, nice. of course, we weren't going to the red carpet. We were just going to do basically what... Uh, you would consider like the influencer experience because since Disney seems to tailor these things now less to press and more to like YouTubers and things. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so it's at the, at the El Capitan, which is the, the real theater, not to be confused, the El Capitoon. Um, we spent a lot of time in front of this will call sign <laughs> trying to figure out what the heck was going on. Uh, and then once you got inside, they started doing um, uh, snacks and things. So there was oh, cool. there was gogurt being handed out, which is yogurt in a tube. Uh, which honestly, yeah. they had all these pictures of of Baby Yoda on them. Yeah. Do you not think they should have changed the name to Grogurt? Yeah, I know missed opportunity, just like Pepsi. <laughs> I would have done that. That would have been amazing. Missed opportunity. He should have labeled it frog eggs. Right. And so so this poster actually is um is like six feet high. It's it's very tall. Um they were doing uh eggos oh, and so they were giving you ice cream that you could put on eggos, uh, which were cool. They had all these boxes. I didn't have any, if you can believe it. I love ice cream. It just mm. seemed inopportune and I was so worried about like wrangling our people in street clothes that I had other things on my mind. Oh boy. Uh, but lots of these huge posters for all the characters and stuff, very sort of epic looking stuff, uh, yeah. comic booky things. Here's the egos that, uh, that Kit took a picture of a little nice, um, <laughs> uh, you know, Grogu. Kit, was it just vanilla ice cream? They gave you vanilla or chocolate option. Oh, okay. Oh, cool, man. I really should have gone for that. <laughs> Good grief. What's Sean's this like, kit? Where's toppings? my ice cream now? Yeah, it looks like it. You got to do toppings. Wow. Dark Silver snowflakes? Ones, ones, and then your choice of like either probably choc hot fudge type chocolate toppings and that, that kind of jazz. Nice. Uh, this is part of the red carpet that we didn't go down. Uh, and, it, and it went down around the corner. They put up uh, an easy up so that um, uh, people can get wet. And then across the street, what you're seeing there, that scaffolding, 
that was being constructed while we were there all day. That's for the Oscars, the upcoming Oscars. And so oh, they're okay. starting to put in the uh, bleachers and the lighting rigs and all the kind of red carpet stuff that they do for that uh, at the Dolby Theater and Hollywood and Highland, which is now called Ovation. I'm not sure it's Hollywood and Highland anymore. Weird. They seem to change the name. Um, they and did. If, and, of course, um, they they did the usual thing, which was free popcorn, free soda, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, lots of, of snacks. And then um, this thing, which was really cool. They, they brought Mando's ship out. And now if you went to Star Wars Celebration, you saw it already, like, uh, close up. But uh, here they were letting you take a picture. So where oh, okay, was cool. this Mandalorian ship? This is on the was stage. It? So the movie screen yeah. has been raised up. Oh, so you watched this, the movie over the top of this. Right. And so the, the screen came down to cover it. I think they pushed it back. It's on rollers. Oh. I think they pushed it a little back. And the um, what you can see on the right-hand side, if I get rid of us, uh, in the front, mm-hmm. is the, the organ. Uh, oh, cool. A thing. So they have the stairs on the side, the organ uh, that pops up. Uh, is in that little alcove, and then there's the main straight um, stage behind the, the thing. Uh, let's see here. So, is this about where you sat, Kit? Is this from your seat? Uh, if it looks like it's from the left side, yes, that's my seat. Yeah. So, Kit ended up down on the ground floor. I ended up dead center, four oh. rows up in the balcony. And if you've listened to the show for any length of time, you know that I'm blind as a bat. Oh, be uh, so honestly, my experience was about like watching it on my television at home. <laughs> <laughs> Looks maybe more blurry, but you know. Uh, so when we stood in line to to take pictures, and if you if you saw the Facebook ad for the show tonight, you saw the picture that uh, of Kit and I together standing in front of the uh, in front of the ship. Um, they had Ooh. a camera sort of aimed there, and the, and we got to go backstage at the El Capitan, which I've only really gotten to do uh, once or twice for various Star Wars events, which are kind of cool. And so uh, this is a picture Kit took of the uh, control area, controls various lighting and cameras and Secret things. Secret area. That's right. Ooh. Shh. Silver man, the man behind the curtain. <laughs> and then um, I never really realized how much of a hot rod this uh, rebuilt Naboo fighter is. Oh, cool. uh, the, the picture here, Kit's got like, it's like there's a uh, there's a air scrubber on top of it and an intake, and it, it really... Isn't this the same one that was on display <laughs> at Celebration? It should be, yeah. It should be mm-hmm. exactly the same one that was at Celebration. And But there was so much going on at the thing for Celebration that I like took a lot of pictures and I checked stuff out. And the, and the thing was is that in the dome... They had Baby Yoda. They had Grogu. And yeah. so that's what you were looking at. You weren't looking at the big stack on the front of the ship. You know, that was like, it was kind of funny. But um, lots of pictures of, of the ship, which were pretty great. Mm-hmm. Um, it was a nice touch. It was a thing they didn't need to do. Um, there was a DJ that was right over by where Kit was sitting. And... They really had this kind of like uh, club atmosphere going on because the whole thing was uh, songs that you knew at about 140 beats per second. (laughs) And and so it was like really bizarre stuff and everything was beat matched and he was having a pretty good time. I don't. I don't really know what that means. Uh, basically, a pick pick a song that that you like. Like say say um, Culture Club. Do you really want to hurt me? Uh-huh. Usually, kind of a slow song. Yeah. Speed it up and oh, put okay. a <laughs> 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 okay. beat behind it. Yeah. And and every song got that. So like oh, they folded in uh, finally from um, that you did your costume yeah. thing too in C. there. C. Preston. Yeah. And hmm. and matched it up and and they were doing like all that kind of stuff which was really funny and then it would be some weird slow mm. song that should never have been played that fast of course um huh. and then eventually they yeah, kicked it was a weird song. go ahead kit it was a weird mix of songs yeah it was really strange and it it like it was trying to keep people's energy up and i get it um 
but it was definitely kind of weird. Mm. Uh, the theater itself is really beautiful. It's restored from the 1930s, but it yeah. is strangely small uh, in comparison to theaters that are like in downtown Los Angeles on Broadway and things like that. Hmm. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> Last time I was there, it does. It is not gigantic. No. Uh, eventually, uh, John Favreau came out. Uh, he introduced Dave Filoni, and then he intru- introduced um, Pedro Pascal. Yeah. Uh, Kip. These are all kids' pictures. Uh, they're really great. Uh, she had a really good seat for all of that, <laughs> uh, which was super cool. Um, Dave Fui... Uh, no, what's his name? Uh, Fuyama oh, is his... What's that? The, the director. It was... Uh... Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, oh, yeah. His, his, name, his last name's Fuyama, and I can't remember yeah, yeah, yeah. what his first name is. Yeah. Uh, he came out and talked a little bit, uh, and then of course they had uh, uh, the Mandalorian come out. This is him taking a selfie. <laughs> <laughs> I love his his outfit. So this thing is great. You know he's so casual, uh, which is is really funny. And Katie Sackoff mm-hmm. came out too, and she had an amazing dress. Uh, she looked really mm-hmm. terrific. And is that all beaded? It's yeah, and I have a little bit of a different picture. Uh, I'll show you in a little bit okay. when I get over to mine. I think you can see it a little better <laughs> from my. A really good outfit of her dress. It was weird too because it was so sheer at the top. It was yeah. like, uh, uh, Katie, <laughs> are you wearing underclothes? It's really strange. But yeah, I. It, all of these photos that I took with the four of them on stage, I was doing video at the same time, so I was like, kind of iffy on if hmm. these were not okay or not. Oh, okay. Yeah, they they're a little perk of an iPhone where you can take photos as you're taking video. <laughs> yeah, they're 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 okay for what we're doing here, and uh, I just love how preppy Pedro Pascal is. Yeah, got a little sweater <laughs> around his shoulders. He's his in like glasses totally. are giant. He's in yellow. Yeah, yeah. he's it's doing a little, this sort of little theme going. And you just kind of wonder, like, is this like the height of fashion? In Mexico, because he's he's like from Mexico. Is like, is this it? And I think he's just playing around. I gotta t- I gotta say though, dude, where's your belt? You tucked in your your shirt. Where's your belt? Come on. I'm kind of flipping through these pictures pretty quick. Uh, they're obviously having a pretty good time. Yeah. Uh, and these are pics afterwards. This was the red carpet area, which was empty by the time we got there. Huh. Uh, and it started to rain when we got outside, so that was uh, that was the thing. Uh, let me go get mine real quick. I won't mm-hmm. I won't dwell on this too long, but I want Colleen to see her dress. Okay. Um, for so the only um, actors from the show were or um, uh, Pedro and Katie that came. Oh or no, were there others no. in the audience? Um, in in okay, fact, hold on. I think there's a. Carl. I we think... had uh, Swallow. We, we had everybody. Oh, cool. Okay. Here, here's a here's a picture that I missed. Oh, nice, nice. Okay. Um, oh, Amy... is that when you said Amy Sedaris is so tiny? She's so tiny, yeah. So Amy yeah. Sedaris was there. Man, some weird Disney exec over there on the left. Hey, wow. we're glad to see him back, man. <laughs> and in fact, somebody, somebody came over there like, I don't care about the actors. I got Bob frickin' Iger to sign my badge. I was very excited. Aww. All right. Um, oh, John Carlos Pazito. Yay. Let's see. Uh, I'm going to go find my pictures real quick. Uh, What'd you say, Kit? I set them in the dock if you want the link. Oh, to my pictures? Uh-huh. I, yeah, I've got them. Uh, I got them right here, I think. I just need to to get them to load, load <laughs> little pictures, load, and many of them, of course, uh, duplicate kits. Um, I just have a different point of view. Uh, but uh, yeah, it was real, really fun to to kind of see everything lit up with the Mandalorian on the El Capitan. You got like this modern Star Wars in the nineteen thirties vibe. Yeah. Uh, it was really cool. Oh, come on now. Don't do this to me. There we go. I seem to have like a whole bunch of 
messages or something that will not go away. Go yeah. away, people. Computer. I really hate this dumb list of like all of these people. <laughs> I can't I can't get to the dumb picture buttons to Not make sure. them go. Um here we go. Uh our friend Roberta. I don't think she's on right Yay! now. Yay! But uh uh Roberta who is our, our resident like uh, Disney champ was there uh volunteering, which was really great. Uh, if you can't see her badge, her character on her badge is Maleficent. So it's super cool. Awesome. Um, so this was the size of the poster. Uh, Sean for scale. Oh. <laughs> so they were pretty cool. Man. So it's like one and a third shots. Right. Exactly. <laughs> um, and then, you know, there were there were some pretty cool. They were they were putting people up on on step ladders to take pictures or like oh, a folding okay. chair or something. It was really weird. And uh, so this is the, these were the pictures that you would get. You handed them your phone, and you got a picture right in front of the uh, right in front oh. of the ship, which was very That's nice. Cool. Um, make sure your lens were good. This was about my seat. I think I'm actually at the edge of the balcony, oh, okay. which is maybe a little closer than where my seat is. Uh, so this is what I saw. Uh, and of course, we did lots of wandering around. I took lots of pictures of the ship because you know detail. Uh, this yeah. is this is closer to what my uh, my viewpoint was uh, from my seat, and so it was dead okay. center, but I was up really high. And but and so interestingly, Colleen, the further back in the balcony you go, the more legroom you have. Oh, nice. Where if you're in that very front row, you don't have enough legroom. Yeah, uh, the very far ones, there's zero. That, that was painful the last yeah. time we we did that. And and the other problem was I'll I'll get rid of oops that's not it let me get rid of our faces here, um, you can see everybody's camera kind of in my shot I'm like, <laughs> uh, and then I had to like shoot around everybody's camera which was really tough because everybody else wanted to, you know yeah. get video or do their yeah, their in my YouTube stuff going here influencer here. thing or whatever was going on, um, so. <laughs> You know, my I'm I'm using my zoom lens over here to kind of get everybody's everybody's picture. Uh, but Katie Sackhoff's dress, if you can kind of see the beading oh, color. Wow. Yeah, that's pretty neat. Was absolutely amazing. Yeah. Um under the stage lights, it just was fire. Wow. Yeah. And it was so it was and the sweet. yellow kind of matches Pedro's outfit. Yeah, I guess they do kinda <laughs> kinda match each other, which is which is really wow, cool. That is that is uh, sheer, sheer, right? <laughs> hey, exactly the word I was going for. I guess those are all the all the pictures I've thrown up. Uh, anyway, uh, it was an awful lot of fun, and uh, I uh, was grateful to Kit for hanging out with me uh, all night. Because, uh, like I said, there was there was some stress until they told us that we weren't going to lose our um, <laughs> we we're going to lose our seats. Don't you hate that? Yeah, it's just one of those <laughs> things that's a little tedious, and yeah. it could have been completely prevented if they'd it 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 should have been in an email because we got an email about what yeah, what we should wear, yeah. how we should behave, but even yeah. that was kind of kind of confused. Like for example, all the emails I got indicated that I was coming in costume, which I wasn't. Huh? Uh, I would like to have, but I don't have a costume from the Mandalorian era. Like, I don't even have a pilot's mm. costume right now that just, I could wear. Should, just Batu bound it is what should should have done. Yeah, but it wouldn't have got me onto the red carpet. Yeah. So well, you know, still. But uh, anyway, uh, but I'm glad for my friends who did get to go. And uh, yeah, so one there were so many guys there, Jeff, dressed as the marshal. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, there yeah. were like six of them. Yeah. Which was kind of nuts, and there were there were more marshals than Mandalorians. Of course. Um, well, it's a less expensive costume. That's together, true. For sure. Uh, Easier to transport. Right. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, it was pretty funny. And one guy, there's there's a I don't know his name. I don't remember his name. You might Kit. Uh, there was a guy with an Australian accent who got his Camtono signed by everybody. Oh, nice. Uh, with. Oh, really? I didn't see that. That's cool. Yeah, so that was really cool. And we had talked to him before he went in. And um, 
honestly, I probably should have interviewed these people in line because they were so excited. It was really interesting to see so many people we know from so many different walks of life going to this thing. And um, there was another guy that I sat next to in mm-hmm. full Mandalorian armor. I'm like, mm-hmm. you know how uh, you're hanging out with somebody and they've got a brand new car and it's absolutely gorgeous and you go to like lean on it and then you back away because you don't want to scratch the paint? That yeah. was me sitting next to this Mandalorian. Super cool guy. Beautiful costume, all chromed and buffed up. And I'm like, I, your your pauldron's kind of in my seat. I don't want to rub the paint off of it by, just by sitting next to you. It's like really tough. Um, but uh, he, because some some people came in, and this was a thing that Disney should have controlled too, I think, or Lucasfilm. One of them should have taken care of this. Some people showed up with shopping bags full of things to sign. Oh. Like nine or 12 yeah. Funko Pops, lots of pictures oh, yeah. and things. Got to get it up on eBay. If you want to sign, want to have people sign like one or two things, that's cool. But yeah. these people apparently monopolized a lot of the actors. And so the guy next to me dressed in a picture perfect screen accurate Mandalorian costume didn't get to meet Pedro Pascal, didn't get his autograph. Uh, and that's kind of not cool. No. Yeah, um, yeah. It, it was the only real sort of downside of the evening that I heard, but I felt so bad for this guy. He was really bummed out. Otherwise, he was super excited because I don't think he'd ever been to an event like this before. Yeah. And they showed us two episodes. They showed us the first episode. And then mm-hmm. after uh, introducing the actors and things on stage, like you saw in the pictures, then they yeah. gave us the second episode with the promise mm-hmm. that we would have to be quiet for a week. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, but um, what about you, Kit? You didn't have any uh, any sort of weird negative experiences? Everything was good? Uh, yeah, everything was fine. Um, I'll complain about my seat because I wasn't center, but it's, it's a crapshoot for what you get. So I'm still just appreciative. It's um, a small theater. I, <laughs> I know. Um, no, it, it was a really nice night. I was very thankful for the invite. And um, it, it was really nice to see the first two for season three on the big screen. Well, and uh, with uh, with Jeff, yeah. um, who um, kind of you know bailed out, mm-hmm. um, we had a um, uh, Taylor. We uh, her name is Taylor. She yeah. hadn't been to an event like this before. She got there late, and so Kit and I waited for her. Uh, to show up so that we could like sort of get her in and she kind of knew what was going oh, on. She had a blast. And oh, I, good, I, good, good. I, you know, I don't know that she directly took your seat, but I don't know. She was no really idea. excited to do it. And so yeah. your, your logic was sound. <laughs> cool. And well, I figured, like I figured I was going to, to work. So I helped Josh get dressed as Luke Skywalker. I helped, uh, uh, Christina fix part of her X-wing costume. Mm. Uh, I help people get dressed. Like, <laughs> so that was like my whole job. I'm like, I'm here. How can I help? And so that was was my thing. And then cool. uh, we wrangled the uh, the people in street clothes. Like Matt gotcha. Matt uh, Matsuda was there, and and people like yeah. that. And got people sort of organized. And anyway, it was a lot of fun. Uh, I always wish. I could bring everybody with us when we go to something like that because it's a, definitely a neat experience, yeah. and and it but but it was a weird experience also like not doing the red carpet part of it sort of being in the background of of things like the only celebrity I I saw in person uh, I said hey to Seth Green I bumped into him oh. and Claire <laughs> uh, as they were walking around which is pretty cool uh, Shauna Chirpsick was there a costume yeah. designer that we know didn't see her. I know a bunch of people like Tracy from Lucasfilm didn't run into them. Uh, And in fact, I made a a new friend in the neighborhood here because our buy nothing group, I, she wanted something that I was uh, giving away and she came and got it. She's like, Oh, I work on the Mandalorian. And I'm like, are you going to the premiere? She's like, I'm going to the premiere. And I never saw her. I kept an eye out for her. I didn't see her at all. So Um, it was, it was that kind of crowded, uh, which was really kind of interesting. So, 
but it was uh, it was an awful lot of fun and uh, i owe uh, okay. i owe christina a thank you note for uh yeah for totally hooking me up nice mm-hmm. nice, All right. nice nice well let's uh, do just a little bit of um star wars news yeah before the top of the hour <clears throat> before it, we run out of time sounds great <laughs> Oh boy, oh boy! Do, 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 do. Um, I don't have music, and no, we there, don't have music. There you go, because because we get dinged every time we use Star yeah. Wars music. Yep, it disappears. I mean, the audio or whatever happens. What if um, we sing the uh, Cantina theme? Does that count? Probably. Uh, yeah. Shoot. There you go. Okay. Um, <laughs> February. Uh, blah, blah. February 28th, 1932. That's when um, Don... Um, I, Franks? Franks? It, I, it, I don't it think just we sounds like a messed music. up microphone is what it sounds like, really. <laughs> I, know she's, I know what she's doing, really, but, you know. Yeah. And it'll probably um, still get us dinged. <laughs> yeah, I know. They're all people. Yeah. And uh, so Don, Don Franks was, uh, was born on uh, February 28th, 1932. Uh, he was um, voiced a bunch of characters on droids. Uh, they cast from late, late, mid, uh, mid 80s or so. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, God, he He's was a... actually it says he was the um, he was the voice of Boba Fett in the um, in the. Story of the Faithful Wookiee and Hollywood Special, too. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, that's but, cool. Um, I mean, because he was yeah. a busy dude. Yeah, he has... Got, oh, yeah, heavy metal, man. He was in that. Holy yeah, man. and he... But yeah, so, oh, my gosh. So, like, being in heavy metal, he uh, he was probably working with Nelvana already, and yeah. so they probably cast him to be Boba Fett in that because yeah. he was someone they worked with. Um, yeah. He's got about 200 credits to his name. Yeah, it is crazy. And... <laughs> Yeah, yeah I saw that. that. You know, every you pick something that was a cartoon or or something. Well, even or Hitchcock, geez, even sci-fi stuff like uh, yeah. Johnny Mnemonic and things like that. Yeah. That's pretty crazy. He was in the Jer- the Jericho TV series. It looks like that was like, uh, and uh, from '66. Well, okay, okay. What is it? Wow. Man from Uncle. Wow. So just tons. Yeah, he goes oh, back to 1954. Yeah. So he. He was busy doing other stuff other than these voices or these couple of Star Wars tunes. Now, this is weird. He was in a show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, several. Well, but he's credited <laughs> as being in Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood mm. as a character called um, Mr. Anybody. Yeah. And in fact, he was in the original version of Mr. Rogers, which was just called... Mr. Rogers. Yeah. Um in in like 64 to 67 when it was a local yeah. show in Pennsylvania. It was 47, 47 episodes episode. of that. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah. I got to look this dude up after the dude, show cause... all these yeah, you yeah. You could do you know swing a thing around and you'll smack into one of his shows he was in. Yeah, that's amazing. Um <laughs> Um our second birthday is um uh, February February twenty fifth, nineteen. Well, gee, thirty something. It kind of disappeared. Thirty eight. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Malcolm Malcolm Tierney. Um, and uh, not only was he um, it's like Ch- Shan Chelson Chelson. Uh, I have no idea who that is. I don't know who the hell that's that is actually, but um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't tell you. I had to look it up. Um, That's funny. But he, other than that, the geez. officer on the Death Star saying, "Where are you taking that thing?" Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. You mean the guy who know. looks like Rucker Hauer? <laughs> <laughs> totally. I always make Rucker Hauer jokes because he totally looks like Rucker Hauer. Yeah. But other than that, ninety other credits. So, you know. Um, Oh come on! Like he was in shows, but Hindenburg, wow. Titanic of the Skies. Come on! Yeah, Braveheart. Wow. And then See, he was they... in the unsinkable Titanic. Yeah. He's getting all the disasters. That's pretty what funny. A lucky devil. Yeah. Where are you taking this thing? Yeah. And our last birthday is uh, 
February 28th, 1940. That's when um, Jim, I want to say Bakey, Bakey or Bikey, um, was born. He did. He worked on um, Emperor's End uh, comic book through Dark Horse with a uh, with uh, Tom uh, with Tom Veitch. But also, in addition to that, he worked on a whole lot of stuff from Judge Dredd to DC Comics and on and on and on. Wow. So, and yeah. and just to point something interesting out, usually when you're an artist on a comic book, you have yeah. a specialty, you have a focus. And so you'll do the pencils and mm-hmm. then hand it mm-hmm. off to other people to finish it off. Or you'll do yeah, the inking or the stuff. coloring. He did all of it. He did yeah. he did the uh penciling then the inking then the coloring which is really unusual to have somebody do all of that uh because it's a lot of work yeah that's really cool very much so uh and then we'll go into the oh we got a couple more minutes here okay Um, yeah we'll make it yeah so that was last birthday uh february 25th 1986 that's when return of the jedi was released on video and Laserdisc and all sorts of fun stuff. 80 bucks on a videotape. Good gravy. Back yeah. When it started pretty much. Well, if so, you if yeah. you remember when the when videotapes were first released, they were that much money because mostly rental stores were buying them and exactly. renting them out yeah. and they felt the need to uh jack the prices way up hmm. so that they didn't get like uh, kind of ripped off by the yeah, rental yeah. companies. Exactly. <laughs> Excuse me. February 28th, 1999. That is when X-Wing Alliance was released from LucasArts. Yeah, such a great game. That was the one that let you fly the Millennium Falcon for the first time. It was a good, good game. <laughs> and last but not least, uh, February 27th, the year 2000. The Magic of Myth Museum Tour opened at the Smithsonian in Minneapolis. Yeah, so this was this was a touring exhibit, and yeah. it um, it started at the Smithsonian considerably earlier than that, like like ninety seven or something like that. Uh, by nineteen ninety nine, it was oh. here in San Diego, at the San Diego uh, Art Museum down there. Okay. Uh, and it never came to L.A., which was interesting. So if you wanted to go yeah. see it, you had to drive all the way to San Diego to see it. And if they had a special uh, um, speaker, uh, so we went down there to see David West Reynolds, who was a Star Wars archaeologist. He was the guy who found all the original Tatooine locations for Lucasfilm oh, okay. so that they could shoot the prequels there again. Nice. Uh, and he also was the initial writers of the first few DK Press Star Wars books. Oh, okay. And, nice. Okay. And so, yeah, so if you wanted to see him and you lived in LA or, or wherever you had to take an hour and a half trip to the South to go to yeah, Balboa yeah. park and, and see the exhibit. But the exhibit was terrific. So many, so many mo- uh, models and costumes and all this great stuff with a um, through line of um, Joseph Campbell's uh, hero with a thousand faces and how Lucas was telling modern myth using old myth. Mm. Uh, as his base it was it was a yeah. really absolutely tremendous uh, exhibit, and yeah. I really hope you got a chance to Except see it. Except that Princess Leia's bikini was on the bottom was on backwards. No, that actually wasn't. Was it this one or was it the one that we saw that we kept seeing the same exhibit as it traveled, mm. which I thought was where science meets imagination. Oh, I thought it was this one because we saw. I thought we saw this one in Chicago. Yeah, it might have been. Uh, but huh. but yeah, I had to to take the book that they published for it, which had C three PO on the on the cover, so it's yeah. probably the Magic of Myth one. And I showed him in the book. I'm like, does this costume on display look like this picture in your book? If not, <laughs> it's not displayed right. Uh, <laughs> that's really funny. Well, it was it was such a great uh, exhibit, and. Uh, yet Colleen is right. It was the magic of myth. I just looked up the uh, looked up the book. Right okay. on. Uh, you want to do the top of the hour, Sean? I will indeed. If you are listening to us, you are doing so over on Sci-Fi Dot Radio. It's Sci-Fi 
for your Wi-Fi. Uh, we're grateful for you for tuning in. Uh, you can go to sci-fi radio and check out uh, news stories, see the rest of our schedule program and things like that. Uh, it is our URL as well as our name, which is crazy. If you're watching us, you could be doing it on Facebook or YouTube or Twitch. Uh, if you can find a way to, uh, to like, or to follow or anything like that, we're very grateful when you do, because that way we know that you're tuning in. So thank you so much. And of course, uh, we're trying to monitor all those chats. Uh, over here too. Uh, I'm Sean Obi Sean Crosby. This is Jess Soldado. I'm Colleen Kaylee Crosby. Okay, well we can't solve him. There she <laughs> is. <laughs> Woo! All right. Um. So last item we have under Star Wars is that John Favreau tells us that the Mandalorian has no ending planned. <laughs> Um, so they're going to milk either, it for all it's worth. Either they're just going to keep mm. running it forever or mm. they're, um, going to leave us someday with an incredible cliffhanger. Now, <laughs> did I not hear that end with po. Pedro Pascal in, in future seasons is like not going to be in the costume at all? They're going to use a robot. He's just well, gonna voice they it. already use um, stuntmen for a lot yeah. of it. I was making up the thing about the robot. Right, I figured, <laughs> but it's IG eleven pretending. Right. I th I thought I heard something, and I'm I'm looking up a, a story here. Um, might have been for season two and two point five. He's like. I, I can tell who's the stuntman and who's Pedro. I, I just kind of feel like it's if it's walking or standing, it's Pedro. <laughs> right, right, right. And if if somebody's I I having a fight, if he's complained about wearing the bucket. It's like, dude, it's not that hard. <laughs> I mean, that yeah. matches up um, a lot of actress complaints about costumes that we'll talk about later on in the show. Yeah. But yeah, I thought. Uh... This this one actually says, uh, and this is from January, that it's going to show his face more uh, in mm. this season. But I thought for sure that I heard something that said he was very likely. Oh, here he goes. Uh, he implies that he won't be appearing under the mask very often in the new season. Hmm. Uh, he said, uh, we're improvising, making myself available. <laughs> <laughs> so so basically I think he got to choose when stuntmen were in the in the costume and when he got oh, to okay. do it. And and nice. of course it makes perfect sense that he does it when the helmet's off. Yeah. But it had also been the timing were they doing filming Mando and Last of Us at the same time? Uh maybe. I'm sure oh, that's that that's it. almost certainly part cuz that's when he was making these comments where he was promoting The Last of Us. Mm -hmm. And of course they were kind of cornering him about Mandalorian. Um, so we'll, we'll have to see, see here. It says there will be less of his face in season three. Um, <laughs> but, but he says that he got to do, um, the last of us because the producers, uh, you Favreau and Filoni were so cool about him going off and doing another show. It was the only reason he got to do it is because they said yes. Oh, okay. that's cool. So they basically, I think they figured out how much they could do with a stuntman. And and I got to say, covering the whole face thing, this is just my own personal beef. Um, it's It's been posited by um, um, Katie Sackhoff's character mm -hmm. that uh, Mando is in a cult. And I kind of agree with her. I'm like, <laughs> dude, just give it up. And take your helmet off. Yeah. Like, why do you keep want to be wanting to be part of this? It's nuts. He's totally in a cult. Yeah, so it's like it's, it's a real drag. Watch cult, whatever. But uh, I, I'm, I'm kind of with her. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So moving on to um, sorry, theme parks. Just, uh, moving things around in the document. That's cool. Um, okay, theme parks. Woo. SeaWorld is going cashless. Um, interesting that they're going entirely cashless because um, 
at least Disney, which is the only theme park that I've experienced since the pandemic, um, it encourages mm. people to go cashless. But as far as I know, they are still accepting cash. Mm. So it's interesting that you can't use cash at all at SeaWorld. Yeah. Um, yeah like aren't they, Jeff, didn't, they, didn't we talk about something like last week or the week before about knots? going yeah. more cashless so yeah knots is completely cashless they've been okay. for a while now um they have um if you have cash with you you can you know and if you that's all you have you can go to these little machines outside um, so it's like a reverse just, atm yeah yeah and just it throws it all in a little card that you could use in the park oh okay yes yeah. so, so it's like um it's like having the spirit coins and that too yeah yeah, yeah that's kind of cool yeah 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 um, I, I a, imagine they're doing that Sea World too for that. Matter, moving but, uh, over to Disneyland, um, a Disney-loving man smashes records by visiting Disneyland two thousand nine hundred ninety-five days in a row, which of course was broken by the pandemic, and it <laughs> hasn't been able to be replaced because of the reservation system. Yeah, so he he basically was there the. Uh, the last day that uh, that we were all there, which was the, oh, wow, like cool. Friday the 13th. Uh, and then the 14th, Disneyland closed for the pandemic. And that was it. And, and can you yeah. believe he so, was just five days away from 3,000? Which oh, I think man, is when he was going to stop. So this, he went for eight years. Every day for every eight years. Every day. Oh, eight years plus. Yeah. Damn. Um. So even if they take the reservation system back out, it still will be another eight years before anyone is able to catch up to this guy's record. Right. And it's, it's, it's he basically he organized his entire life around visiting Disneyland. I remember wow. just after the pandemic seeing photos of him standing outside the gates. Oh, it like, was so it heartbreaking. Was heartbreaking. <gasps> It was just terrible. And and the thing that's really interesting, so like he started going and he's like, hey, I hit 30 days. And Disneyland's like, yay, here is a little gift for you hitting 30 consecutive days. That's amazing. And yeah. then it was like 60 days. And then like it was a year. And he's just like kept going on and on and on. And so Guinness Book of World Records has certified his uh, achievement. And oh, wow. so, I mean, really, who's ever going to break that? Just, I mean, you know, eight years from now, maybe someone will try if they get rid of the system. But you know, I, I could. You, you would have to live nearby. There's like, there's a, a lot of stuff that that you know would have to line up. Well, um, and you'd also, you'd also always have to be able to afford the top level pass, right? And you'd yep. be able to have to have the time to go exactly. So, and mm -hmm. and that's nothing you can do with reservations because it's so easy yep. to get blocked out of a date. Yeah. Oh, um, but uh, so so uh, what was his favorite ride that he always did no matter what? The train? Nope. Oh. What was his favorite ride? Yeah. Hmm. Just take a guess. Um, Every Octopia. visit he had to do it. Mr. Toad. Because okay. well, okay. it's the it's, the it's technically the only real ride in the park. <laughs> It's the only one with ride in the title. In the title, oh. yeah. Oh, yeah, gotcha. But uh, anyway, silly. it's a pretty cool achievement. I couldn't imagine, you know, as a kid, I'm always like, oh, man, you know, it'd be great to get in the Guinness mm -hmm. Book of World Records, which I guess technically anyone who did the Rose Parade is uh, mm -hmm. because of, of the 501st Legion being put in there back in 2007 or something. But um, <clears throat> the... You know, we were always trying to think of crazy stuff like, you know, consecutive days wearing roller skates or something. Uh, um, and, I mean, this guy chose a pretty good one. And and I think it chose him, really. I mean, he just started doing it, and then he just failed to stop. Well, that's like how you can fly if you yeah. forget to hit the ground. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, Aim at the ground and miss. Disney California Adventure Food and Wine Festival uh, Food yep. Guide. Um, mm, yum, yum, yum. Mm. The the top item mm. that they have looks interesting, but I feel like it won't. It would be something interesting to eat at home. I don't know if 
it'd really be great. It is um, roasted beet and goat cheese flatbread with basil pesto. And I have to say, I thought these were nectarines. I didn't think they were beets. <laughs> so, hmm. okay. I think that I uh, wouldn't like it as much. Well, here, let me uh, let me see if I can load this up here. Um, I mean, people are are certainly pretty excited that it's coming back. There is yeah. a um, a corn popsicle. No, that just sounds gross. <laughs> I mean, at some point, they're going to run out of genuinely good things and subject us to just awful stuff. Like, like what's this thing? It looks like it's a... Like they are it's, it's, that's what I told you. That's I just told you about thing? that. Okay. That's goat cheese and beets. I mean, because it looks, it looks like a pizza with gross stuff on it. <laughs> it is... Okay. A pizza that I think I would enjoy. And and that wow. doesn't even look like you beets. Look, what it look. looks like peaches, They're... honestly. Cool. Or nectarines, which is what I just told you nectarines. that I thought awesome. it was. <laughs> Sorry. I thought um, you said looks like beets. it's also veggies and cheese. It is beets. I told you that it looked like nectarines. Yeah, it's gross. Okay. It's really gross. Um I don't know whether I'll participate in the food festival this time. I guess I'll just have to see what's there when I am. But um, I and I haven't looked as in depth into this as I usually do because I'm usually all about, oh, how exciting. Let's go look at all the food. But I've been so disappointed lately yeah. that um, I haven't. Um, Jeff, you should know there's a berry patch section. Like a, one of the about cheese. One of the uh, little huts is called Berry Patch, and they have oh. not Knott's family cheesecake topped with mixed berry compote, but they have Kenny's family cheesecake. <laughs> they also have gotcha. blueberry buttermilk pie, blueberry pancake cold brew, and purple glow grapes and green glow grapes. Hmm. Those are... Uh have been listed a couple of times which is really interesting they'll they'll be listed for like every one of the stands probably limit because 10 they're selling it and is it just like a glowing thing that goes in your in your yeah food? it's just a glowing cube okay. that goes in your um, drink got it um interesting kenny's family cheesecake yeah the next picture down looks kind of gross to me it's basically poutine with beef short ribs <laughs> instead of chili. Yeah, it's weird too. Or not chili gravy, sorry. And there's like a weird ham slider. <laughs> <It's> like <laughs> Cubano slider. Uh, there's hmm. a barbecue beef brisket slider a little bit lower down that mm -hmm. um, looks a lot better. Oh, there's the glow grapes on the right hand side there. So yeah, it's. Uh, oh, that's not what I thought it was. I. Just assumed that it was the cube that they've always had. No, well, this. I thought it was similar to the cube, but I figured that it was shaped like grapes and lit up. So I guess that's the thing. It's it a way to mark your glass, I guess. Shaped and, like grapes. And what you may not have noticed while I was scrolling past this, there is a long wine section. Uh, oh, yeah. Up oh. at the top. It was just nuts. Yeah, um, the, the Food and Wine Festival is really, there's a lot of wine and a lot of beer and stuff. Yeah. And so, like, like this has uh, the IPA sausage dog on a soft pretzel roll, which is what you're seeing on the left. And then everything underneath it is uh, wine or beer, which is pretty funny. Oh, okay. Yeah, these are all mostly beers. And I love that they're limiting you to 10 per person on those glow grapes. It's like I mean, it's going to be 10 per person per time you stand in line, because right. how are they going to know? And and are they really going to be that big a deal? I don't know. It's pretty funny. All right, this cluck-a-doodle-moo. That's disturbing. Yeah. Honey habanero chicken wings. Uh, the beef brisket slider that Colleen mentioned. I might try that. There. Uh, Chipotle pineapple bourbon sour. <laughs> mm. Ooh. 
Not much the of it. The item forward to at this festival is or California. Is, is what? what? It's soaring over California. They're bringing that back. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, as they cool. should. Oh, because they've had soaring over the world? Yeah. Yeah. Soaring around the world. But whenever they do this event, they always bring back the California video. So if you so there's the there's the corn popsicle. Right there. Ew. Oh, gross. Yeah. <laughs> and then if you go farther down um, to the Lamplight Lounge Boardwalk Dining... Mm -hmm. they do, in fact, have grilled peach toast with mascarpone spread. Ah, grilled peach cool. So okay. there, there is, in fact, bread actually. with peaches and salad on it, <laughs> which we thought was at the top, but that was really beets. Ah, okay. That's pretty cool. Avocado time. <laughs> yeah, that's a regular one. They always have that one, that stand. All right, yeah, there's the uh, Lamplight Lounge. <sighs> yeah, I don't know. I, I'm just not much of a foodie, man. It's, there's a few cool. things I would try on here, but even things that sound good in the description make me just... The, the, the images of them are just like, bleh. The Black mm. Forest Ham Grilled Cheese, I, th I think it is the... Um, Red wine poached pear jam with sun dried tomato cheese sauce. Yeah, that looks like caviar <laughs> to me in this right. photo. Yeah, that's that's the photo we're looking at here. It looks like yeah. it's got like a dipping sauce. Hmm. But oh, it's the zoom in on it. It's the red wine poached pear jam that uh, looks unpleasant. Yeah, and huh. uh, stemless flutes. Well, uh, like a lot of have... stuff I can actually eat there, but you know. There's a lot of meat going on. There's a lot of meat, too. But, I mean, there's a lot of veggie stuff, too. But, I, you know, I don't pass anyway, so it doesn't matter. So it looks like the, <laughs> the collectible thing are these stemless flutes, which appear to be uh, aluminum. They're food and wine branded, and they're from uh, Corksicle. Oh, yeah. Corksicle so they're, they're like thermal yeah. flutes. Hmm. Cool. There's a god. There's a lot of stuff here. Yeah. Churros with gook on them. Yep. You could tell Sean's a fan of all these things. Yeah, They're yeah. real, real big on these sort of like, you know, pizza-like things. This is this is downtown Disney. So this mm -hmm. is Naples with a uh, uh, pizza caprina. It's a white pizza. Hmm. Ralph Brennan's Jazz Kitchen with barbecue shrimp and grits. No. Uh, that would kill Colleen. And I wouldn't yeah, eat it anyway yeah, because yeah. I can't do grits. Yeah, grits are gross. <laughs> Not a fan. Hmm. Anyway, interesting some stuff. Uh, what were the dates on that again, Colleen? I do not know. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Because <laughs> Kelly, Kelly asked when it was. Um, Hang on, I'll tell you. Uh, I will tell you while the guys and Kit talk about Jungle Cruise's newest skipper, Josh. Oh, that was fun. Oh, Josh Gad. <laughs> they, yes. They've Hi. had a few people. Hang on. March 3rd through April 25th. <laughs> so tomorrow, tomorrow to the end of April. Okay. okay. Um, there have been a few people that have been uh, <clears throat> like, allowed to be like honorary skippers over time uh and of course when the jungle cruise movie came out we saw the rock do it it was pretty yeah. cool uh and now it's josh gad i was surprised at how flat his delivery was as somebody yeah. who is like a professional <laughs> yeah. performer mm -hmm. wasn't is, it insane how flat that was it was kind of weird should i run a little bit of it was it? great i mean Maybe if you want I like found it, it to kind be of kind of slow. <laughs> What's that, Kit? You're breaking up a bit. I said maybe it was intentional because it was kind of painful. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, man. It's we we've seen him do other stuff where he's uh, more casual, like his uh, um, reunited apart videos and things, where he gets the cast of movies back together. Um, mm -hmm. 
Hmm. It's it's weird. And and admittedly, as a guy who's often selected to talk to people in person and sort of public speaking thing, there's there's a sort of, you know, ramp yourself up for it and get over your stage fright kind of a deal and do it. But, mm. you know, some people kind of not so much. No. So. I think he was doing it on purpose. I don't think it was like... Well, let's find nerves. out. Scat. Or as I force my parents and loved ones to call me Disney legend, Josh Gad. I just happened to be walking around Disneyland today alone <laughs> as a 41-year-old man. And I was stopped hey. and asked if I wanted to live out a dream. You see, about 25 years ago, I had a dream to be a Disney Jungle Cruise skipper. I think you're going to have to scrub forward to when he's actually resistance. on the boat. Now, all these years later, after living with that rejection, I have been invited famous Jungle Cruise. This is the world famous Kylie and I'm the moderately famous Josh Gad. Please watch your step as you guys get on the boat today and watch Frozen 2 when you go home. Now this is my first time skippering the Jungle Cruise. This is Kylie's first time drivering the Jungle Cruise. So now would be a good time to call any of your loved ones and say goodbye. Hi guys. I've never done this before. These guys are in for a ride. Here in the rainforest, it rains often, 365 days a year. Some years, it, it even rains every day. You can feel free to laugh. <laughs> you certainly don't have to, I'm not gonna get paid anymore. I was told this stretch of the river is filled with alligators, but that's a crop. <laughs> Ooh, look what we found, guys, look what we found. The secret bathing pool of the Indian elephant. And it's okay to stare, they have their trunks on. <laughs> Schweitzer Falls, named after the world famous explorer and the founder of the Jungle Navigation Company, Dr. Albert Falls. <laughs> you know, I've it heard that more water comes from yeah. Schweitzer Falls in one minute than a person can drink in their entire lifetime. It's kind of interesting, but the, the disappointing thing for me, I think, is that he didn't add anything to it. It's like, we know the jokes. Right. He what's, does, he what's does his one of spin? his own at the He added a few of his own. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. All right. It wasn't all, it wasn't all just the spiel. Well, you guys can check it out. But, uh, I mean, I don't know. I, I think any one of us might uh, have a little more fun with it than he seemed to be having. Hmm. Just a thought. I, I mean, don't know if I would, but I, I would have I, a blast. I'm not saying that I could do as good as him, but I think there are other people in this room who would um, have more fun with that. I think Gamera would <laughs> have more fun. <laughs> What's that, Kit? Cough, cough, Sean. <laughs> um, so two days, two day, not two days ago, yesterday, yesterday or two days ago? Yesterday. Um, it snowed at Disneyland. It was yeah. yesterday. Yeah. Because I, um, I just missed it. I was so bummed. And, um, oh, they, do they have video in this? I mean, I've seen video of it. Yeah, I'm looking to, to take a look. There is a video. Yeah, there is a video. The one that I saw was a video from in front of um, Pirates. And then... Uh, I saw a photo from Batu. Oh. So that was fun. Yeah, and uh, I I know a lot or of people. Sean just missed it. I did. I ended up working on a kind of failed project uh, in the afternoon, and didn't get to Disneyland as early as I wanted to. It was a bummer. Uh, hmm. But uh, a lot of people just had a blast and. It must have been weird if you were like on the Matterhorn and there was like real snow falling on you from the Matterhorn. <laughs> I think somebody's uh, Twitter comment was, um, "I can't. I'm on the Matterhorn and I can't tell if it's real or fake." <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. And and yeah, the the thing that Colleen sent, uh, uh, the the Orange County Register has a great headline: "Real snow falls at Disneyland, not the fake soapy stuff." <laughs> Because Disneyland's known for doing fake snow all the time right. on Main oh, yeah, Street. Yeah. yeah. That's pretty great. 
Yeah, I would have liked to have uh, seen that. That would have been cool. Well, and our friend uh, Roberta, who uh, you saw a picture of her uh, from the premiere a couple days ago, uh, she sent video. She was driving around Anaheim right by the park where she works, and it had all sorts of slush and and hail and stuff that was going on on the same day. And so, like, some people got snow, some people got hail. Yeah. Which was kind of nice. And we didn't get either. So I saw photos from the same day and time period of people who got snow on the beach and somewhere <laughs> near-ish, you know, somewhere in Southern California. And, um, but I do not believe we had any snow at our house or hail. Oh. This, um, uh, yesterday. I don't. No, I don't think so. Yeah. Um, I've I've experienced hail over the past couple of weeks, like like seven or eight times, uh, but not here. Yeah. Not here. You said that you did, Kit? Yeah. We were running some errands, and on the way home, we start noticing, like, because the, the sky is nice and pretty above us. So off up ahead of us, we're, we're driving the 15. Uh, we're seeing all these really dark clouds, and we're like, that looking kind of scary we're continuing on we get into it it starts as rain and we're like okay no biggie and then it starts messing with the mm. wipers and i'm like oh crud this is snow oh, <laughs> it wow. was just nasty so mm. i was like i drove in my first blizzard wow <laughs> all right mm. so yeah. last bit for theme parks is that the mandalorian and grogu are now in batu east um, and they will also be in Disneyland Paris for two weeks, the oh, cool. first through the 14th. Yeah. Um, so, so if I, you're I in Florida the... or Paris, get out and see yourself some Mando and Grogu. Yeah. And on one more point having to do with Baby Yoda, um, if you go to Google um, and a Google search... There's a baby Yoda and type in the Mandalorian. There's a baby Yoda in the bottom corner. Click on baby Yoda and then just keep clicking on yeah. baby Yoda. Hmm. It's so uh, cute. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is cute. What were you saying, Jeff? Oh, well, I was bringing up that um, I was looking up because I know it I know it's snowed uh, here and there a few times back to like L.A. long ago. And I found out that in Anaheim, it actually did snow back in 1962. Oh, that's interesting. So Disney did get snowed on before. I think oh, the most cool. snow that that I've seen photos of in Los Angeles was in 1947. Yeah, in the early 40s, there's a lot of yeah. Yeah, different snow here and there. Uh, moving on to trailers. Can, um, can I just say that Baby Yoda's like kind of like chaotic here? It's like really tearing didn't up. did you notice that Baby Yoda is kind of chaotic? Yeah, I mean, you know. <laughs> kinda, kinda, I think but... Sean did the Google search and he's seeing I, I what did, Baby Yoda I'm, is I'm doing through yeah. Google what search. Oh, dear. Yeah. This was, was kind of <laughs> funny. Um, okay, moving on to trailers. Coming to Netflix soon is Pokemon Concierge, which is... Um, uh, it they was have a weird. theater or a hotel? A hotel, I think? Yeah, it, it's it, just like a vacation area for Pokemon. Yeah, it's yeah. it's like a like an island it's, retreat for Pokemon. Yeah, yeah, and it's the an animated yeah. story of the concierge for yeah. that. And it's a stop motion animation, I believe that one. Well, is, it has it? that. Is that look, the stop motion one? It has that look, but it might not actually be. Yeah, it, they, I read the article somewhere that said it was actually literally a stop motion, like they huh. went and did it. I think they sort of wasted their time on that, from what I saw. But it was real short, so. Well, the 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 trailer for it, and it's this is a it's Netflix. It's incredibly short. It's like a little teaser. Yeah, this is a Netflix oh. thing. It's like really super short. Yeah. And it really, just um. It's it's about a woman who is the concierge. Yeah. yeah. You don't really get much information about her at all so yeah. right it's the the story is told from her perspective right they they just show you like psyduck yeah walking around so 
Coming to Theaters is a one-day 25th anniversary event on March 14th for the movie Pi, which is a documentary, I believe. There, no, it's it's not a documentary. No. It's a, a Darren Aronofsky film. It's like his first film, oh. which they're apparently re-releasing in a better format. Like and they'll 4K. also, after with the one-day event... In Los Angeles, they'll have a Q&A with the filmmakers, and that will be broadcast to the other locations yeah, that that's, are showing it around the country. That's March 14th. It's Of course, they're showing it on Pi Day 3.14. Yeah. So it's the 14th of, of March. Uh, there are no tigers in this one. Right. I checked. <laughs> um, but um, <coughs> it's it's an A24 thing. And so it's, um, you know, it's going to be edgy and wacky and crazy. And it's a it's a psychological thriller. Coming to Disney Plus on March 17th, Bono and the Edge, a sort of homecoming with David Letterman. She said Bono. <laughs> and this is, um, I, I can't you, remember babe. who the director of this was. I made it's, note of it. It's and then... Ron Howard. Oh, I thought Ron Howard was a producer. Oh, maybe. And there was someone else who was the director. Uh, could be, because mm. I know that we talked. It was Ron Howard's birthday, and we talked about this uh, on my morning show. Oh. But um, uh, Dave Letterman goes to Dublin to do this, which is really kind of interesting. Yeah. Uh, and it's so like the other two members of U two were off doing something else, and so Bono and the Edge got together with David Letterman, hung out, did a concert and talked about their history. It's interesting that he's not credited in IMDb for this. Who, Letterman? Bono. <laughs> um, well, I guess he's not considered an actor in this. He's considered self. Okay. I mean, because I know, I know Ron Howard. Yeah. Oh, God, I can't type. If you look up Ron Howard... Um, is he shown as the director of this? He's shown as the producer of it. Okay, so there is someone else who did something recently who we... Um... All right, so it is directed by Morgan Neville. All right, well, maybe I'm crazy. Um, yeah, I, I don't know uh, what else Morgan Neville has done. Uh, he did Will You Be My Neighbor, produced that. At 20 feet from stardom. Uh, and oh, okay. Mickey, the story of a mouse. I oh. must be confusing it with another movie. At any rate, it's um, David Letterman, like Sean said, is going to Ireland to uh, basically follow them through and talk about like interviewing Bono and the other people and... Um, the Edge, I guess, is the other The Edge person. is a guitarist for, for you, too. <laughs> um, <laughs> edge of the stage, Edge of the, you know. So it's, it's kind of a documentary. Edge of tomorrow. Yeah, you know. Right. Yeah, it's, it is. It's a documentary. And, and basically, Dave Letterman's the host. Uh, yeah. But it's weird because he's walking around. And like, of course, everybody knows Bono and everybody knows The Edge in Dublin. But uh, David Letterman also has his own level of celebrity there, too. And it was, it was yeah. kind of an interesting trio wandering around it looks like it could be fun coming to disney yeah. plus april 28th peter pan and wendy um this looks good i'll watch it yeah it's it's interesting first off it has alan tudyk in it oh and so that. of course we're gonna watch it um but um it's disney it's part of disney's ongoing um let's remake everything as live action. Thing. Yeah, pretty much. So it's going to be different than their animated film. It's taking more cues, I think, from the uh, J.M. Barry book. Mm. I didn't um, realize that Jude Law was playing Captain Huck. Well, and that's the yeah. thing that's kind of weird because traditionally where uh, the play is concerned and things like that, whoever plays um, the dad, yeah. Mr. Darling, also plays Hook. And so yeah, I'm a little disappointed that Alan Tudyk isn't playing Hook. I know. What oh, the heck? I didn't. 
I didn't he know what both. part Alan Tudyk was playing. Yeah, but, I, yeah, I see here, Mr. Darling. I love, uh, I love Jude Law. I think he's great. Yeah. I think it's weird. Alan, oh, good hook. Uh, Jim Gaffigan is Smee. That could be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> and there is a bajillion kids that we don't know oh, as, man. as the Lost Boys. I, I have to see it now just to see Cap, him as Mr. Speed. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Molly Parker is playing Mrs. Darling. Um, she was in the Lost in Space television series. And she's been in a bunch of stuff that you've seen. Uh, Deadwood huh. and, uh, and things like that. So... Uh, that's hmm. that's kind of an interesting choice for for the mom. So there's somebody with the oh, character the, named yeah, Dirtbag Benny. Okay. Dirtbag Benny. Yeah. <laughs> uh, moving right along to <laughs> coming to Netflix on May 25th, the new series called Fubar, mm-hmm. which I complete. Oh, it's Arnold Schwarzenegger, right? Yes. Yeah. And um, it's like a Action comedy. Right. Oh, sorry about that. Um, <laughs> I was trying to see. There's. He's got like this partnery uh, woman that he's hanging out with, and I do not know. Oh, I do. Who she I've is? I've seen her in a bunch of things. I know, but I I was looking for her name. Um, I can't remember her name, but I will tell you in a moment. Her <laughs> name is. Um... Schwarzenegger's trying to be tough, and obviously it's a comedy, so. He's, yeah, he's a ex. He's a um, CIA agent who is on his way to um, retire, and then some family thing comes pops up, and he has to go back to being a CIA. And agent. just so I didn't realize and, yeah. this was this person's name, Fortune Feimster. I wonder if they've changed their name. Maybe I don't know. Um, um that's uh, the the picture I'm looking at doesn't really look like the same person, so. Um, looking through the credits, though, um, I don't see any other, um, The, the person who said she gave him a tap? Yeah. Yeah, that's who that is. Yeah. There's, it, I yeah. think it's, there, there's no, uh, credited as somebody else in the list, so, mm-hmm. I don't know. Um, so, FUBAR, in case you don't know, stands for Effed Up Beyond All Recognition, Yep. So that will probably tell you the tone of this show. Yeah. I think the yeah. reason you don't recognize her is because I've seen her in Life in Pieces, and you didn't watch that with me. I didn't. Mm. I saw bits of it. but She also did... Um, she she was like a host on a behind-the-scenes show that Netflix did <clears throat> during lockdown. Oh, okay. Um, anyway. Hmm. Um, I it looks sort of crude. Um, yeah, the 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 trailers on the crude side. Yeah. Yeah. Coming to theaters on May twenty fifth, the machine. Yeah. What we watched was a red band trailer. Right, which means yeah. it's got all the vulgarity in it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And yeah. the only redeeming feature that I found in this mm-hmm. was that um, it's got um, Luke Mark. in it. Mark Hamill is in yes. it, playing a very yeah. non-Mark Hamill-y kind of character. Yeah. Uh, I, was, I was like, that's why I put it in there. <laughs> right. Mark Hamill <laughs> is taking a cue from Carrie yeah. Fisher and playing the kind of role she would have played. Um, uh, he's he's very earthy, we'll say, uh, in this. But uh, the thing that's really interesting about this is that um, Brent Kreischer, Brent Burt. Kreischer is the name of the comedian that this is based around. And uh, six or seven years ago, he made kind of a big splash talking about uh, a story where he went to Russia and ended up mixed up with the mob. It is an absolutely true story. Uh, It is very outlandish. He didn't know anything about uh, speaking Russian, even though he studied it. He got roped into the trip by his Russian language teacher who was mm. giving him a passing grade so that she could maintain the classes to get her uh, her doctorate. And she said, hey, you know, if you come to Russia with us, you you can have a major in Russia, in Russian. Mm. 
And he's like, okay. And so he does it. And then he gets mixed up with the mob. All hell breaks loose. Yeah. And so this takes that real story and then tacks on this fantasy story yes. about an aftermath <laughs> like 20 years later in present day. Yeah. Um, it looks pretty funny. I would go watch the comedy routine and then decide if you want to want to see this because the comedy yeah. routine is really pretty funny. Oh, okay. And and so his the character he adopts when he's in Russia and the only thing that he can speak in Russian is the machine. And yeah. so he just shows up and he's got this reputation and people are so excited. To, it's the machine. <laughs> it's like yeah. nuts. And and that part of it is all 100% real. And wow. then there's a fantasy story attached to it where now it's suddenly a spy thriller where it's almost a weird buddy movie between this comedian and Mark Hamill. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, it'll be. But but it's like I said, it's earthy. It's it's easy or an easy rated R. Um, so <laughs> um, the long awaited trailer teaser, actually. For yeah. Haunted Mansion, which is coming to theaters on July 28th. Mm. Um, I want to preface this with, I knew the trailer was coming out this morning. I wanted to see it. I searched for it, which I don't normally do. And I got what purported to be Disney's Haunted Mansion new trailer. <sighs> I hate and that so it much. was a lie. It was some oh. fan-made monstrosity that was a horror movie. It was really bad and um it tinged my ability to enjoy the trailer when i did find it so that was disappointing oh. so then i walked watched it again this evening and it was still a little bit in my mind that horror stuff but it was better and um i'm keeping my fingers crossed that haunted mansion is good because i really want it to be good yeah i have a friend who uh he's a big nerd he's a game designer he says he's seen a preview screening of it. He said that if you like the Haunted Mansion attraction and the history behind it, that kind of thing, you will probably really enjoy this. He said it was good. He said he yeah. liked it. Um, he did not tell me, since he was a board game designer, if it is better than the Lakeside board game uh, from the Haunted <laughs> Mansion from the 1970s. Um, and, and honestly, I don't think anything short of Guillermo del Toro could hold a candle to the Muppets Haunted Mansion these days. Mm. Muppets Haunted Mansion was really good. Because it was so good. <laughs> um, but if you watch the trailer, they reference a lot of stuff in the ride. And I think that's the gimme part of it mm. because you expect that. Yeah. So I expect that, that the referencing the ride is a very small amount of the movie. And yeah. I think they're giving that to you in the trailer. I think yeah. the story is is probably much more involved than that. That's my hope. Yeah. Um, it seems mm. pretty good, but also, um, mm. didn't we find out that um, Jared Leto is in this? Yeah, he's the Hatbox Ghost. Yeah, which is sort of really yeah. putting me off. But if you think about it, though, I think if he's not a main character. The movie will do okay. It doesn't you know, like, look like a big like, part. Yeah. Like Blade Runner 2049. He wasn't really a main character. I mean, yeah. he was a character in it, but I'm not a main guy. Right. So it'll probably work. And and so just to offset this, just so that you guys know. It's the only way. Um, Owen Wilson <laughs> is in it. Danny yeah. DeVito is in it. Winona Ryder. Rosario mm -hmm. Dawson. Yeah. Uh, Lakeith Stanfield is in it in what mm -hmm. looks like a pretty big role. Uh, Tiffany Hedish. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of good people in Jamie this. Jamie Lee Curtis. Yeah, and Jamie Lee Curtis is in it. Yeah. She's not in the trailer, but she's in the in the thing. Yeah. So it could be really good. And interestingly, yeah. some of the stuff they do show you in the trailer are you know very specific sort of horror movie trope things, which are kind of interesting. I mean, they're obviously going for scares, uh, even yeah. though there doesn't seem to be a rating on this yet yeah because it says the film is not yet rated because yeah. there's a kid however yeah. and it's disney i'm guessing PG. it's maybe a pg-13 yeah. yeah maybe so i'm, I'm guessing thir i'm big i'm i'm go aiming towards just pg but you know it could go i don't know 15, it depends how scary they really want to go yeah. so we'll we'll see i mean it's scary enough having you know jared leto in it but um um 
Yeah, and Lisa was asking, you know, you know, why put him in the movie. I'm like, well, I don't know. That's Disney. Disney is who chose that, so I have no idea why <laughs> they keep casting Jared Leto and stuff. But you know, well, it's like Marvel or not Marvel. It's like DC using um, what's his face as the Flash. I mean, why? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah I yeah. I think in this case it may have just been they had already shot with him. They just left it in mm -hmm. um, the. The Hatbox Ghost was apparently in Del Toro's version supposed to be played by Doug Jones, oh. and he oh, that would have been he good. was going to have a major yeah. role. But this was back yeah. in 2014, um, and he had developed like 50 or 60 pieces of art. Uh, they they had gotten kind of far into the production pre production process. Yeah, so I'm kind of sad that we don't. Mm. Get it's, that one. It's, you know, it's like The Hobbit. It was, you know, Guillermo del Toro was making The Hobbit as well, and then the studio came in and he he was out, and they brought back Peter Jackson, rushed him through. Right. Um, well, but, that would have been amazing. But what uh, Guillermo del Toro said is that they they hadn't cracked the script yet. So they had a bunch of things they wanted to include. They did a bunch of art yeah. to get the tone and the feel and whatnot, but the script never really gelled, and yeah. I. And and he says, I got a quote from him. He says, I have to believe that Disney will make this movie as soon as we crack the screenplay. Yeah. Uh, and and so that was the failure. He says, we have not succeeded in cracking the screenplay. So maybe he never did. But that Del Toro movie is the one I really signed on to see. Uh, me, too, me too. I will watch this one, too. Uh, and it certainly looks more interesting than the one with Eddie Murphy, which wasn't as bad as I remembered it. It just wasn't all that interesting. Um, so we'll see. Owen Wilson seems yeah, a little yeah. weird in it. So it remains to be seen if he's like a guy that, you know, we if that whether he looks out of place or not in the movie, because he seems yeah, out of place I in mean, the trailer. I think he's playing someone. I, I think he's someone who's pretending to be someone else, kind of thing. I I don't you know like in the in the trailer and such. Yeah. Like they're saying like he's a preacher or something. I'm he's like, got a priest I collar. I don't think he is. And then later he doesn't know? have a priest collar, so I mean yeah, he looks like so, he's a con man or something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It'll, this is uh, the. Pardon me. This is the um, Johansson produced one, right? I don't know. Oh no, could be. You know. At any rate, we it's have it's to produced it. by. It doesn't say. Uh, Justin Simeon is uh, <clears throat> directing it. I don't see the the producer of it. Because she was supposed to be on a haunted mansion movie before. Right? Andrew Gunn and Don Han. Oh, Don's are the producers? Got it. I don't know. Oh wait. Hang on, is that No, what? excuse me, that might be the old one. Oh no, here's um, Haunted Mansion is uh, Guillermo del Toro. By Dan Lynn and Jonathan Eyrick. Okay. Hmm. But Guillermo del Toro is still listed as an executive producer on it. Huh. Oh good. Well so you uh Jaron Rossiter, Brigham Taylor. <clears throat> Interesting. Chris Bowers is doing the music. I don't know Chris Bowers. Yeah, I don't know. Hmm. All right. So last trailer that oh, we Richardson. looked at today was uh, for a game called yeah. Off the Grid by yeah. Neil Blomkamp. Neil yeah. Blomkamp. District Nine. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I, I wouldn't say, and, and, and I wouldn't say it's a trailer more than more than just like um, a cinematic a, that sets things. Yeah, up. a cinematic scene from the from the from the, the game itself. But it's, and it's it looks neat, but it to me it's like, uh, can we get on with it? You it's know, it's yeah. super <laughs> uncanny valley. It's boring. Yeah. Uh, yeah, IGN is producing this thing, and um, it also. I don't know if they did keyframe animation or mocap on this. If it's mocap, yeah. it's not very good. Yeah, because um, I think Bomb Bombcamp directed this little thing, but I don't know yeah. what else he did to, did for it. But it's just the story isn't you know, very engaging to me. Uh, yeah, and um, so when um, when 
uh, I've worked motion capture with Colleen. Uh, very frequently they do something that's called low res hands where they don't yeah. capture a lot of action with the hands and things. Yeah. Uh, this looks like that. It's like yeah. the character's hands aren't really behaving naturally. There's not a lot of stuff going on. It just, I don't know. It. it I expect more from Neil Blomkamp and I expect yeah. it to be a little more finessed. Yeah. Um, honestly, it reminded me of, um, uh, gosh, what was the, the Zemeckis movie, uh, the Polar Express. Oh, it, the, the, the so textures weird. are yeah. great. It's a well-designed thing and it, but the animation doesn't look great and the characters don't look great. And I'm like, yeah. uh, so Go whatever off. this was supposed to achieve for us, yeah. um, yeah, yeah. I I don't really know, but it's it's part of something called off the grid cinema, which is yeah. apparently going to be an ongoing thing. He's going to make yeah little little short things that come on, come out occasionally, but if it keeps looking like this, I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Uh, the game itself, assuming that there really is a game and it's yeah, not it's just a they're not just going to show you movies about the game. Uh, yeah. It's a 150 player PvP fight mm, uh battle gotcha. royale yeah so we'll see i don't know all right sean you want to take the next Jeez. subject uh i will we lost a uh a few people this week uh at the age of uh 87 we lost disney legend uh, bernie mattinson he was a, an animator and a director uh story artist and a producer at walt disney animation um he had a 70 year career with them uh, absolutely crazy uh and uh he was supposed to receive the walt disney company's first ever uh 70th anniversary service award on june 4th Aww. sadly he's not going to make it honestly i think they should give it to him posthumously um but um he worked on uh as director for Mickey's Christmas Carol in 1983. Uh, it was the first time Mickey Mouse had been back on screen in 30 years. He co-directed uh, The Great Mouse Detective, uh, all sorts of great stuff. So very sad to hear um, of, of his passing, and especially uh, for a career that like was just so long. It's just phenomenal. Um, but... Um, uh, sad news, definitely, if you're a fan of animation. Uh, Rico Browning passed away at the age of 93. The, he, was, he was the original uh, underwater gill man in The Creature from the Black Lagoon. And so he, uh, he did all the underwater scenes, the, the difficult swimming in the big rubber suit. Uh, he passed away on February 27th uh, at his home. And um, he uh, he used to do uh, various fan events and things and was, was a fan favorite kind of guy. And then uh, finally, uh, Wayne Shorter passed away at the age of 89. He was a, uh, a jazz saxophone player and is credited with uh, a lot of uh, innovation for very uh, complex compositions and sort of opening up the use of uh, saxophone uh, in jazz. So uh, he worked with uh, Steely Dan and Carlos Santana, a bunch of people like that. So uh, sad to hear of his passing. I'll see if maybe I can play some music for him tomorrow on the show. All right. We have enough time for one um, item, Jeff. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um. There was a big announcement. Uh, Warner Brothers is going to make more Lord of the Rings uh, films, franchise films, uh, because they got a deal going with um, Embracer Group, and they're going to make more. I, from what I understand, they're not planning to do remakes of Lord of the Rings or The Hobbit. They're, but they're going to go on what Embracer Group has um, the rights to, which is literally. Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit and the unfinished tales and, and such. So there's that there's a lot of um, 
I guess you can call it appendices sort of um, stories and whatnot that they could actually use to make um, little films and so, make movies out of, hmm. which is neat. Um, I just, you know, it's, it's like it, cool, but I don't think anything's going to match what they've already made because these are just little bits, probably like one shots they could come out with it. And from, in my opinion, the, what I can see, but and they'd have to also invent a lot of things because there's not a whole lot of additional story or, you know, whatever in these, in these, like in these appendices. So, yeah, but they're already doing that for the series. And so maybe they're hoping to ride that kind of thing where they've just got like, got more ideas than they want to include in the series. Mm. And they're thinking that that maybe they can make some money off of them by doing more movies. As and long it, as they up the production quality for the TV exactly, series, which is crummy. Yeah. yeah, that would be the nice thing. Would it be between the two of them back, back and forth, you know, trying to outdo each other, maybe, or so to speak, so that the people at home win. <laughs> Kit, yeah. I don't know if you're yeah. in a position to take one of the topics, but do you have anything you wanted to talk about? Well, if you're in the need for more John Williams music, you're in luck because there's about mm-hmm. to be an hour and a half worth coming for Indiana Jones. Nice. Yeah. And us, that'll give us our last hit of John Williams music. Yeah, because you know he's retiring like any day now. <laughs> <Yeah>. Maybe. <laughs> right. Sean, do you have a quick one? I do. So um, the uh, chief creative officer... Uh, Pete Docter uh, oh, for yeah. um, Pixar said that they um, asked a little too much of audiences with Buzz Lightyear with the uh, the movie that just recently mm-hmm. came out. He did Monsters, Inc. and Up and Inside Out and Soul. He kind of knows what he's talking about story-wise. And he yeah. says that they just – they thought that the audience would switch gears from Toy Story to Lightyear. And because there were no real connections to the Toy Story universe beyond the main character of Lightyear, Mm. is think that the audience members weren't expecting this sci-fi story versus... That was what I was expecting. ...the toy. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we knew what we were getting from the trailer. And it was was supposed to be the movie that inspired Andy to really love Buzz Lightyear. It just... But the problem is is that they didn't match up. They didn't blend. And I don't that think that Pete Doctor is correct. Correct. Yeah, yeah I don't exactly. think so either. Yeah. But that's what that's what they're saying. Uh, yeah. And he said, if if fans had known the full idea behind the film, there were too many other things they expected from the movie. Yeah, there's an awful lot of elements that didn't work out in the in this movie. That you know, so it's kind of grown I, I, on I me. Can't, yeah. Um. um the biggest they gave problem. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Socks. Yeah, I think the the thing that that bothered me the most about it was like, and, and I understand they wanted, I understand they want to show that he's like a stubborn guy, but it was just like, okay, you've tried this many times, right? We can stop. Let's stop hitting that dead horse, okay, and get back to the film. Yeah, but it was pretty kept brutal. Doing that. Okay, yeah. and then the very last thing is that um, last week we reported that BBC and Netflix were going to ban corsets in the future, and we <laughs> said that the article that that came from was a little suspect, and that turns out to be true because Netflix and BBC deny that they're banning corsets, which is good because that's entirely silly. If you're making yeah. a period drama that's supposed to be reasonably historically accurate, you should dress your actors the same way. Because we've, yep. we've gotten past the time. Remember the films of the 1950s oh. where you can see all the zippers in the back of the dresses? <laughs> we're past that. Yeah, yeah. In the 1940s hair. <laughs> oh, my God. We're, yeah. not, we're not past doing modern hair on historical costume, though. People no. do that all the nah, time. You know what? You're just, yeah. you're, and like modern makeup, you're just not going right. to be able to get past it. You want to wrap yeah. us out, Sean? That is it. Uh, thanks for tuning in tonight, hanging out with us. We appreciate your time. We know it's two hours is a long kind of show, uh, but we're Ooh. grateful. Uh, tomorrow, I will be on the air at uh, Good Morning Tatooine at 9 a.m. Pacific time or uh, 12 p.m. Eastern time. If you want to tune in for that, feel like you didn't get enough for some reason, always glad to have you. Uh, in the meantime, all of us will be back 
uh, next week, whether we're on YouTube or Facebook or Twitch or on sci-fi.radio, sci-fi for your Wi-Fi, we will be somewhere. I'm Colleen Kaylee Crosby. This is Jeff Solidato. Boba Kit Sylvain. And I am Sean Obi Sean Crosby. As always, everybody, may, may the, the force, force be with, be with you. you. Throw some credits <laughs> up here for you guys over on the TV side of things. We will see you later, guys.